Greetings guys, this is Tocraft and today we are going to look at two of my E100 replays. The first one is a E100 game on the map Mines with no artillery and a very good matchup for this tank. Well, first of all I will explain to you guys what is up with the E100. The E100 is a tier 10 German heavy tank and it is a very special one. That gun that you can see on the front of this thing is a 150mm gun. The biggest gun on any heavy tank in the game. It has got 750 alpha damage. A tremendous amount of alpha damage. But what does the gun lose? It loses accuracy. This gun has got 0.4 accuracy. What the gun also loses is... Uh, the reload time is pretty long, yeah, but it's pretty logical because the alpha damage is that high. What you also lose is aim time. Yeah, the aim time is quite alright, I have to say, but what do you lose the most and what is the most painful loss that you make on this gun? And that is penetration. This gun only gets 235mm of penetration, also the lowest on any tier 10 tank in the game. But if an M103 is showing his side to me, then this range doesn't even matter. I can easily penetrate his side armor. But what is the commotion with the E100? Everyone is always talking about shoot you, fire, heat or not. Because the heat is the premium ammo on this gun. And it has a huge, huge, huge penetration. I don't know why it's not popping up. There we go. 334 millimeters of penetration with the heat shells. My op opinion about this gun is that I will not fire heat. I have only fired heat once and that is in the next replay we're going to take a look at. But we will park that for a second. 235mm of penetration is more than enough in my opinion. I, I never really had a problem with that low amount of penetration. It's just that certain targets... Yeah, like the mouse or something. You just cannot penetrate a mouse with 235mm of penetration. All you need to have is side armor flush. And how big is that chance? So, only in the next replay you will see me shoot heat. And that is with a really good reason. But for now we will stick to the AP shells. So, my opinion is really straightforward. I do not use any heat in this tank. 235mm of penetration is more than enough as you will see in this replay. So what have I achieved at the moment? I've already achieved 3000 damage with 5 shots and also with a very juicy fire on that IS-8. So what am I doing now? I'm just trying to clean up these campers back there because I want to go around on the map. I want to drive around the hill there, but before I can do that, I first have to clean up some of these those campers there. Especially that Jack Tiger. That Jack Tiger is really, really dangerous. I was trying to hit this lower plate, uh, but from this distance, that can be a really pain in the ass because this accurate, this yeah, this gun is not the most accurate as I told you, and the armor on the Jack Tiger is just too strong for this gun to penetrate the upper plate. Because this tank has the... Of the Jack Tiger has got the hull of the Tiger 2. But I think my gun does find it mark there on that Jack Tiger. As we take out the Jack Tiger. Securing 560 damage on him. And now there's this WZ who is not sure, putting attention to me. I put a shot three strikes into his hull. And... Yeah, it penetrates. Also another thing that you need to take note of, you can see me turning my turret and that is because my turret can be penetrated from the front. In the E100 you always have to angle your turret, as you can see that Waffentrager of E100 is a really strong player and he is trying to penetrate the front of my turret. But as you can see I am angling my turret so he was not able to penetrate the front of my turret. And now this WZ is here, he has no chance of penetrating me. Except if he hits me in one of the other weak points um, other than the lower plate and that is this bar on top of the tank as you can see. This is an easy penetration for most guns. So that is also um, a weak point of this tank. 
I was trying to get the kill here, but someone else does. Doesn't really matter. And I know that the Waffentrager is just fired and the E100 is dead. So I know where the Waffentrager is and I can drive in the open calmly because that Waffentrager has got a really long reload time. So I have all the time in the world to go after him and get one more shot into him because I won't be able to do more because everybody is going after him. I can see that he is uh, pointing his attention towards those mediums. So the back of his tank is pointed towards me which leaves me with a... Very tasty shot in the turret. And there we go. That's the last shot we will get in this game. So, uh, everything went really, really quickly in this game. So, I will try to highlight a few more things. So, weak spots of the E100. If the E100 is not angled, the lower plate is very vulnerable. Also, what is really a weak spot on the E100 can be the cheeks of the turret if you're not angled. But you need 250 millimeters plus to penetrate the cheeks of the E100 so to be safe always angle the turret as you saw me do when I was hiding my lower plate against Rex I was also angling my turret armor another weak spot is this bar on top of the tank so how I avoided getting hit and that was driving backwards and forwards why I was keeping my armor and my turret angled in that way I made it very hard for the enemy to hit my uh, weak spot on top of the tank and in this game, as you can see, I didn't even need my heat ammo. As I already told you, I believe that you don't really need heat in this tank. I only bring heat in this tank for uh, really important situations, uh, which we're going to see in the next replay. But that is a 1 in uh, 20 games or so. I Those were the first premium rounds I had ever fired in my E100. So... Let's take a look at the stats of this game before we get into our second game. So guys, I had to take us to whatreplays.com because I was stupid enough to not screenshot the stats of that game. No idea why, because it was an absolutely awesome game. So as we can see, I got a first class medal, a fire for effect token, a shell proof token and a bruiser token. I got a confederate, oh no, a cool headed medal. Excuse me, I uh, typed that wrong in the title, but that does not matter. A cool headed medal, a steel wall medal, and a high caliber medal. Let's look at the team scores. As you can see, I finished top on damage. 5,934 damage done. And we got 1,044 base experience with these medals. Um, far more than anyone on both teams was able to get the enemy e100 came the closest but i undoubtedly had the best game of everyone well let's look at the detail reports i fired 12 shots of which 12 hits and 8 penetrated so the accuracy was really good in this game giving me the total of 5000 5934 damage um, i received 15 hits of which only two penetrated my vehicle and I bounced 13 and that shows you what you can do with the E100 if you angle it correctly. I bounced 5,800 damage in that game. Very good amount. Um, yeah, and the rest is also pretty standard. I didn't have to travel very far because there were no artillery so I could just stand in the open. Um, I got a very healthy amount of credits in that game. And my premium account is expanded because um, it has been 13 days since I bought the Cromwell B. So my 30 days of premium are expanded. So even without premium I got 30,000 credits profit in that game. And that shows you what you can do if you not fire heat and still have massive games in the E100. This is only a proof that I believe that you don't need to fire heat shells to have a good game in the E100. Also, if you are in a almost tier 10 game, 235mm is more than enough to penetrate enemy vehicles. I had no problems whatsoever. Anyway, now that we have taken a look at these stats, let's get into our second game. So guys, here we go in the second game with the E100. As you can see, I am platooned up with one of my friends, Yogurt, and he is playing, uh, is playing his... 1, 2, 1, the tier 10 Chinese medium tank, but I am still driving my E100 and I am of course going into the city. The matchup is very good, 
the same one as last time. The only difference is that the enemy have got one artillery, which can be a really big pain in the ass for me. An M5355. Yeah, that's an American tier 9 artillery, which has a very devastating gun with a lot of splash damage. Anyway, I'm going into the city, so I should be fine here. What I always try, um, try to do is get in towards this alleyway first to maybe get some shots into mediums who want to advance. As you can see Yogurt is fighting there but he has lost a lot of health already because of that E50M. But as you can see here is an IS-7 and IS-7 is a really dangerous target for the E100. Um, it is very hard for me to penetrate an IS-7 reliably as you can see. I was trying to take the shot and wait it. When he was turning in his hull so that I could try to put a shot in through his tracks. But an EIS-7 is a very dangerous target. You should almost uh, try to avoid those sort of tanks. Here we can see a mouse and I don't have any chance penetrating the mouse. You can see me aiming there thinking maybe I can penetrate the top of his tank. But then I decide not to shoot at him. I have no chance of penetrating uh, the mouse in that position. But I'm trying to still keep my gun around the corner to maybe get a shot onto the side of the IS-7, but that does not work. I see that there are a lot of tanks trying to advance around the corner there. Yogurt has unfortunately died because of those very aggressive E50M players. But everyone has a bad game once in a while. But anyway, let's focus up here. We've got a lot of tanks around this corner here. And I'm trying to support the, these guys because they really need help. IS-8 is around the corner here. And I am thinking, okay, he's in my first target. Oh, there's the E-100. Trying to fire at this bar on top of the tank. But my shot went really high and I was not able to hit the bar. So that was E-100 accuracy for you. So, what does the E100 like? These close-up fights where the accuracy doesn't really matter. As I'm going to take out this IS-7 of IS-8. And I got hit by the artillery there. He did around uh, 400 damage to me. Only with splash. So, that sucks for me. 400 health, gone. Oh well, I, I still feel that I need to defend this corner here. So I am still trying to. You can see the pike nose of the WZ-111-14 there. Fortunately it bounces. The shot went perfectly where I aimed it though. I'm angling my turret and my hull as you can see. Waiting before my uh, gun reloads. And then the ST-1 behind me gets a hit with a big shot that's no good shot so I decide to not fire hit but now I can get around the corner I can see this yak tiger here I'm finding his weak spot on the upper plate I kill him but he does put a shot back into me so I could have taken out that yak tiger a lot more cleanly there but anyway it happened so there's the WZ again he's speaking out I can see his hull I quick fire snapshot and I kill him. I didn't really had the time to aim there because he was going to fire and pull back really quickly as well. Anyway, this corner is safe to be honest. There's only an IS-7 and a Waffentrager of E100 somewhere around here. Waiting for him to turn his tracks, the IS-7. Because it is possible that you can penetrate the IS-7 through his tracks. But now something really devastating happens. The artillery hits me. And splashes me for another 400 health. But the splash radius of that artillery is that big that it even kills the Yak Tiger who is next to me. Waffle Trigger, I react quickly and put a shot into him. Very good play there. But what I see now is that the Waffle Trigger and the IS-7 are still there. Also I can see that this E4 here is trying to hold off this alleyway and that is that, that mouse is still there. So keep an eye on that mouse. That mouse is going to be a really hard target for me because I yeah, just won't be able to penetrate a mouse reliably with 235 millimeters of penetration. IS-7 is focused his fire on other targets so I have a side armor and I can put a clean shot into his side and take him out. Bit of a shame of the amount of health that the IS-7 was on. 
81 damage is not really what you want to deal with this gun, but sometimes you just need to kill tanks and that, yeah. Uh, yeah, takes a shell. But now the Waffentrigger gets spotted, then E4 donks a shot. And I have loaded heat. The first heat shells I've ever fired to engage that mouse, but now I'm going to waste one on this Waffentrigger because this E4 can't aim. So that sucks a bit for me. I had to waste an entire heat shell that costs a lot of credits on a 17 health Waffentrigger of E100. And now he makes another misplay by taking a shot from him as well. But now I have loaded the heat to take on the mouse. I just have to. There's no way that I'm going to win a fight against the mouse without loading heat here. I'm sure to get right through the cheeks, as you can see there. That is a weak spot of the mouse. That's an easy pen there, but now the E4 donks it again. And it's 1 versus 4 for me. I was so focused on killing that mouse that I didn't see the artillery get spotted on that side of the map. And now I am getting surrounded. So what I need to do, that guy just fired. I really need to take out um, tanks as quickly as I can. Oh, that was a bit of a misplay there. I took a shot from the mouse for no reason. But I have to kill this mouse now. There we go. But now the artillery is also advancing and I am not seeing it. Trying to bounce these tanks in front of me. Luckily I do and I see that the Leopard PTA is loaded as gold ammo so I have to be careful. But the artillery is behind me, I have to kill him quickly. Will he take a shot? Oh god. I do kill him but he manages to put one shot into me as well. Luckily the Leopard PTA shoots gold right into my tracks. But I'm trying to angle against both tanks. This is really, 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 really hard, but... Oh god. I didn't succeed in killing the Leopard PTA. What my misplay was in this game, I was angling my turret against the Lorraine, who was clearly shooting me. My lower plate was very well covered up, so what I only the thing I had to do was angle my turret at this point. But I angled my turret for the Lorraine, who was clearly not shooting premium ammo at me. And by angling my turret against the Lorraine, I put my turret in a very useful angle for the Leopard PTA. So he could easily put a shot right through here. And um, yeah, the Leopard PTA was shooting gold ammo. So it was no problem for him to penetrate my cheeks. So that was a bit of a yeah, hurt break. I could have won this easily. I uh, should have loaded a G ammo now to kill that Leopard PTA and then maybe one AP shell to kill the Lorraine because I don't think I would kill a whole Lorraine with a G shot. Anyway, the games on that day weren't going that well either. So I said um, when we tuned in for this game um, to Yogurt, I spoke to him and I said, okay, if this game is not going to be a pools matter or something, then I will quit for, uh, for today. But it was not a pool's mail, but it was a chance to get another Redley Walters of 9 kills. But this is the best result of kills I've ever gotten in the E100, 7 kills. The damage could be a lot better, but I had to kill a lot of low health targets, giving me a total of 4430 damage. Could have been a lot better, but I enjoyed this game a lot, because it was very tense and... I played it very well, to be honest. So, let's take a look at the post-game stats of this game. And let's see what we ended up with. So guys, these are the stats of that game I just showed you. And as you can see, it was a brutal defeat. I got a ace tank and a tier 10 tank for a loss. I got a fire for effect token, a duelist token, and I got the top gun medal for killing seven tanks as we have a look at the team scores now in total as you can see I finished top on experience I got 4430 damage the second uh, most damage on the team as you can see the team 175 did 200 more damage than I did but I did get 1177 base experience for a loss and then take in consideration that when you lose, you get 50% less experience than the winning team. So, how much base experience would I have gotten when I um, would have won this game? 
And then take also in consideration that I would have killed the Leopard PTA and the Lorraine. I didn't do the most damage of my team, but I did fire the most shots of my team, I guess. I had the most penetrating chances, but I didn't get that such a high amount of damage because I had to finish off a lot of low health tanks. So that caused me a lot of damage. So as we now look at the report details, I fired 14 shots of which 13 hit and 10 penetrated doing only 4430 damage which, which could have been a lot better if I didn't have to finish off that many low health targets. I received 15 hits of which 17 penetrated my tank or went into the tracks and 8 non penetrations. Uh, I blocked 2730 damage in total and um, I spotted two enemy vehicles yeah that's that's the thing that I don't think is really important well now I had to travel only 1.3 kilometers because most of my engagements were at close combat which is the habitable zone of the E100 close combat fights where the accuracy of this huge 150 millimeter gun doesn't really matter at all in this game I received 44,000 credits but I do make a loss of 30,000 credits and that is because I had to fire all my 5 heat shells in this game. One for <laughs> destroying a Waffentrager of E100 on 17 health which is totally inappropriate because that E4 just had to finish him off. I don't understand how you could donk your shot like that. That thing is such a used turret. Anyway, I also had to kill an artillery with uh, for 400 health with a heat shell. And I had to put three heat shells into the mouse. But all in all, I am really happy that I got a ace tanker for a defeat. Uh, that is something that doesn't happen that often to me, especially in a tier 10 tank like the E100. I was thrilled to pick up the ace tanker in my E100 because I didn't. Uh, if I got my first class medal not that long ago because the first game that I showed you guys was from Friday, I think. But anyway, I was really happy to pick up the Ace Tanker E100. So now I have got both my tier 10 tanks aced and put in my garage. So that is really nice. So guys, that was the video. Hopefully you liked this video. Hopefully I have shared my opinion well. And hopefully you know what my opinion is about the E100 now. Um, yeah, the thing that I said, I don't think that heat ammo is needed only against very heavily armored targets like an IS-7 or a mouse but furthermore I wouldn't use the heat ammo at all but I hope you like this video I would really appreciate you leaving a like or telling me what you think about this video in the comments maybe you want to share your opinion about the E100 in the comments below uh, that would really be awesome so that I can discuss with of you guys I really love to uh, talk to a lot of you Anyway, that was it for now, for real. I hope you like this and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.